Hey y'all, I'm about to make my grandmother's delicious, super easy crock pot pot roast. Um, it is her recipe, except I skimmed off most of the fat. And also when I am searing the meat, I'm using a lot less sodium on the meat. Um, also, my grandmother tended to do her pot roast in, um, what do you call it, a Dutch oven. She would put the meat in a big, you know, like iron pot and put it in the oven for a couple of hours. Um, but whether you do it that way, whether you do it on top of the stove and keep it on low for a couple of hours, or whether you do it like I am doing it with a crock pot, um, it's good. So stick around for my delicious, um, juicy, tender, awesome pot roast dinner um, with creamy mashed potatoes and flavorful, fresh, green beans coming right up on this episode of that be more chick uh foodie cooking vlogs yum lord have mercy family look what i have got here this is going to take you back and give you good memories of that old-fashioned old-school pot roast that delicious pot roast that grandma or mom or auntie or uncle whomever used to make or still makes to this day. Uh, I'm telling you, there was nothing better than coming home from school, coming home from church, waking up Sunday morning, uh, coming back from wherever being in the house and smelling pot roast in a crock pot or in a Dutch oven. Oh my goodness. Or up on the stove in a pot simmering for hours until it gets fall off the bone tender. Um, I'm going to make old school pot roast Sunday dinner. Alright y'all, see I got this big piece of meat. I'm not going to do a ton of salt because the French onion dip and the onion soup mix have plenty of salt in them. But I am going to salt this decently. Um, rub a little onion powder in to this meat. This big piece of meat. Um, if you have any garlic powder, whatever. This is like, to me, is like adding garlic uh, and some onion. And other seasonings. And pepper. Because I'm using this, I'm not using um, that much pepper, if any. Because this has a lot of pepper in it. Salt free has a lot of pepper in it. If you are doing uh, on a sodium restricted diet then just use the salt free um, let's do a little bit more of the onion salt make sure you get the side of the meat and we're gonna let that sit I have let that come to room temperature in the package and then I've rinsed it off and patted it dry you want you do not want your meat dripping with blood or water from when you washed it uh, off before you put it inside of your pan to sear because we're going to sear this meat um, and you want it to be not be wet because you want it to get a nice sear on it um, one more thing that I usually will do and I'm going to do it on the other side too is a little uh, smoky paprika and I'm going to put a little on the other side too I have some onion, chopped onion, one medium chopped onion, um, and about three or four ca medium carrots in this pan with some oil. You can use vegetable oil, olive oil, it really doesn't matter, just have a little bit of oil in there. And I do like to season my vegetables as well, so a little onion powder. Dash of seasoned salt. 
Don't go crazy. We do not need a whole bunch of sodium and salt free on the vegetables. If you are not using salt free, use your garlic or any kind of herb seasoning you want. Some people like to use a little Italian seasoning. Hey, you know, use what you like to use. I'm going to crank up this heat. This is a big piece of meat. Maybe I should have used my super huge crock pot, but I think this is going to work. Get that big piece of meat in here. And guess what? It's going to work. For me, this is going to work from this pot. It's going to work for me. So, uh, make sure you get that. Down in there, a little more of that smoky paprika is going to help it see, get a nice golden brown sear. Um, I want this heat blazing because I want a nice sear on this meat. So I'm going to let this meat release some of its juices and sear. Get a little teeny bit of a light brown crust on it, and then I will be right back, y'all. Oh, look at that nice sear on that meat. This is what you want your meat to be looking like. Like this. A nice sear on each side. You want all these juices starting to come out the meat. This is going to make your roast, pot roast, so delicious. And flavorful. I'm gonna let it sear for about four minutes on this other side. The onions and the carrots are getting caramelized at the bottom. And then I'm gonna start making this homemade hot roast gravy. All right, y'all, it's time to deglaze this pan. And I'm doing it with just water. Some people like to use beef stock, chicken stock, if whatever you do uh, for purposes of reducing sodium. For me, uh, I use water to deglaze my pan and I have plenty of flavor and seasonings um, down in my pan. And don't forget, I'm going to be adding some of that onion soup mix and that North uh, soup mix, French onion soup mix, which <laughs> is plenty salt. I thought I had more onion soup mix. All I have is a little bit, but that's cool because... So add it. If you have one envelope of Lipton onion soup mix, add that. But I thought I had a whole envelope of it. I don't turn my heat off just for a minute. I'm going to add this entire packet of Nor French onion. Whole packet. And I'm gonna stir this, deglaze the pan, and get that those bits, all those beautiful bits from the bottom of the pan. Yum. And I might need some more um, of the Nor, but for now, let me turn my heat back on. Kind of low. Um, if you have some cornstarch or, you know, flour, I'm old school, I do flour and water. Also, if you use cornstarch to thicken gravies, use your cornstarch. I'm old school. I use cornstarch, but I mostly use flour and water. So, um, I'm going to add some of that. And turn my heat up a little bit more. 
and I'm going to get a little bit more of the uh, flour and water. Don't be scared of lumps. Let me tell you something. You know how many times I've had uh, lumpy gravy, even when I've done everything right. So just stir it, and you see no lumps, but you want to get all those bits from the bottom so that it doesn't clump up. Um, and I'm about to taste this to see if I need some more of that packet of um, French onion soup mix. Or if you just all, only want to use Lipton onion soup mix, just use that. Um, people use all different types of things to make their gravy. So however you make your gravy, hey, rock it out. This is just my uh, old school way of, that I was taught to make a uh, pot roast gravy. Okay, so I've tasted that and thank goodness I have another pot packet of this. Because it could use a little more help. So you want to add this, either this or onion soup mix or seasoned salt or whatever you use to, to season, to salt. You don't want it too salty. But you do want this roast to be well seasoned. Um, you don't want it overly salty so that people are like, ugh. But you do want it to be seasoned and not under salted. There's nothing worse than a stew soup or roast or any kind of meat or something with gravy that doesn't have enough salt in it um so let's stir that all right let me let me give another taste A little bit more. In fact, I'm gonna add the rice. So I wound up adding uh, both packets of the um, French onion, and I'm gonna crank this heat up because I want to bring this to a boil. I want to see how thick this is gonna get, and then I'm gonna drop my meat in, and it's gonna be on. This is just gonna be chilling out overnight. It is smelling so good. Hot in here. We taste this. Um, for me, and because I'm having gas, I'm just a little bit more seasoned salt. And this is good to go. All I needed was that final little touch. Um, some people add a pinch of sugar. I do not to like, you know, red sauces to cut the acid. And some people also, believe it or not, also add a pinch of sugar to brown gravies. So, you know, I find that I haven't had to do it. Um, maybe it's because of the pack, the seasoning packets I use. But, you know, do what you are used to do, how you were taught, how you were brought up making. And so let me taste uh, one last time. You see that gravy's getting nice and thick. That's good. A little teeny bit more water. And this gravy is good to go. I'm going to add a little bit more salt free. And time to drop my meat in. Um, you see, my meat had been like. You know, just sitting over there. See that nice sear? Look at the juices coming out of the meat. 
and I'm just gonna get it. Ah, just right. <laughs> I just made it. <laughs> Look at that. And I'm gonna let this meat. in here I'm getting ready to get my crock pot base look at that home style old school goodness if you want to add potatoes add potatoes parsnips whatever kind of root vegetables you like celery whatever you do do it um, this is good right here for me and mine so uh oh making a mess So, let's turn this off. That gravy get ready to start popping. Doing a popping lock on me. Uh, and I'm not trying to have no injuries from the gravy. So, look at that. That meat is going to go down so low and slow. In here, this meat is ready for my crock pot base. That gravy is savory and delicious. Yum! I wish I could eat it now. Alright you guys, you see this? I've let this roast, pot roast, cool off. I've had it, put it in my refrigerator. And this is all the fat that skims to the top. Uh, I'm going to be skimming it off and it's so easy to get it off. You see? It's like um, it comes right off. You do not want to have all this fat in your body. So, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> That's the fat, and I'm just going to be putting it, like, to the side. Um, but look at it. I put it in a little container. That's all the fat. When you cook something like a pot roast or um, do stew chicken or whatever it is, let it cool off. Um, when, you, when you let it cool off, you know, like in the refrigerator over night before you reheat it again um, or you know just let it cool off you you can get all this fat look at that you see that <laughs> and I'm gonna get um, you know these little bits I don't worry about as much but look at all that fat that I got off that's to the side. I'm going to, of course, throw that away. I don't want that. And there's fat there. So I got some, get ready to get some creamy mashed potatoes together. Uh, I have about six medium sized potatoes that I boiled in this pot. Um, I can't find anything in my kitchen today. I'm just going to mash. Mash them. Nice creamy. These are going to be some nice creamy homemade mashed potatoes to go with my delicious, rich, uh, flavorful pot roast. And those yummy green beans, fresh green beans, those yummy fresh green beans. Um, you know, some people will use, <laughs> you know, beaters and stuff like that to make it super creamy. Uh, I just like it mashed with the mash. These potatoes mashed with the mash. Um, if there's a little teeny tiny lump here and there. I'm telling you, I'm not. I'm not gonna go crazy about that. Um, so uh, I'm not using whole milk. I'm using reduced fat, two percent milk. I'm just gonna eyeball a little of that. Um, Y'all don't know how I'm just. It's Sunday. I am. I love Sunday dinner so much. I'm ready to eat. I'm having a friend over. We're going to have this pot roast and um, it's just going to be delicious. I've got some 
sour cream. Usually I use reduced fat sour cream, but with these mashed potatoes, um, I'm using just, you know, the regular sour cream. So I'm going to use about a big spoonful like that of sour cream and Um, I've got butter, and this is actually salted butter. I've got unsalted butter, and I've also got salted butter, and I use both. Um, mostly I use unsalted butter and things that don't need any salt. Um, I haven't put any salt in those mashed potatoes, so salted butter. So that's about two and a half tablespoons of unsalted butter. I'm also going to use some... Um, little cracked black pepper and I don't use salt because I use a little ranch seasoning in my mashed potatoes so I'm just gonna eyeball some of that not too much because you don't want it too salty and I'm gonna just fold this don't beat it and whip it you'll make it tough I want fluffy, light, airy, creamy, homemade mashed potatoes. Y'all, look at them. Nice, creamy. I added um, a little more of this. So um, I added about half of this seasoning packet. And that's why I didn't add any salt. Because I usually will do ranch seasoning along with the sour cream. But look at how nice and creamy. Look at that. Um, I have been folding the potatoes just like this they are nice and creamy um, perfect amount of thickness and I'm just gonna clean my pot up a little with a clean um, napkin. Um, a little more cracked black pepper. And guys, my creamy mashed potatoes are ready. Yum. Ready for gravy ready for pot roast all right guys dinner is ready i just took the top off of my pot roast it has been simmering overnight on low power the meat is nice and tender look at the gravy um look at that meat look how tender the meat is the meat is falling apart look at that you see it the meat is falling apart look at the carrots look at the gravy look how nice and rich pop the carrots are nice and tender the meat is fall off the bone tender the gravy is nice and savory it's not too thick and it's not too thin yum look at that Look how the meat just, but it's not disintegrating. That's how you want it. You want the meat to be really tender, but you don't want it to be disintegrating. There's those nice creamy mashed potatoes that I made with the sour cream and the ranch, what I call my ranch mashed potatoes. They're nice and creamy. Um, fresh potatoes, 2% milk, a little less butter. Um, delicious and there are those green beans um, I do have a vlog for fresh green beans up so I hope you guys will check that out the recipe for step-by-step -step recipe for this these fresh green beans is up has been up for a while now and I've got some nice soft rolls that I heated up so they're soft and fluffy on the inside and then they've got a little bit of crisp on the outside and I've got my butter um, waiting there so 
dinner is ready. <laughs> um, I hope you guys make this uh, pot roast. Like I said, it's my grandmother's recipe. It's very special to me. It's delicious. Um, the meat is so tender and so savory, so delicious. The gravy is delicious. Um, onion soup mix is very old school. If you don't use onion soup mix, Nora also has a um, onion soup mix. Or, you know, you could just make your gravy however you want. But this makes a really nice, rich gravy every time. The onion is cooked down perfectly. The carrots are nice and tender. Look at that meat just breaking apart. Um, <laughs> it's just delicious. I want to thank you guys for being a friend to this channel. Um, my grandmother's delicious, tender, juicy, falling apart, tender, totally delicious, Sunday dinner, pot roast. Um, like I said, some people say eye brown roast. Uh, chuck roast beef roast it really doesn't matter it's all delicious um, make some for Sunday dinner Saturday dinner a nice easy weekend dinner in your crock pot you see how easy this was all right guys until next time take care